I think this question relates to, if I remember correctly, uh, an article in the Financial Times. Victoria asks, Jack, are we parasites? <laughs> <laughs> well, that, I could have talked about that earlier, but that's where these diversions come in. And that intrude on my day and make me push things aside to respond. And there was a very, I think, naive article by a UK money manager saying that indexing was parasitical uh, because it took advantage of the efficient markets created by active managers. So we didn't contribute to the efficiency, uh, but we, we capitalized on it. And first place, that has nothing to do with, uh, you know, whether market, I mean, I, I've never believed totally in, in efficient markets. I believe sometimes yes, sometimes no. Long run, almost certainly yes. Short run, almost always, almost always no. Uh, but uh, so, I, but I did take the guy on. He mentioned me, and he mentioned Vanguard about being the fomenters of this parasitical behavior. But I took him on and actually cheated. But I changed the question a little bit. And I said, "Look, a parasite. There's this host body over here, and the parasite is taking something out of it. And in this business, we're all parasites. Uh, no question about that. We're a parasite that takes." Six one hundredths of one percent out of the host body. That's the market return. And you, sir, are a parasite that takes two and a half percent out of the host body. <laughs> <laughs> you know, if you don't think that's important, you compound it over a while. So we had a little back and forth. He wrote back. I didn't, didn't answer his third thing, but I felt better at having done it. <laughs> the FT has always been extremely kind to me in my ideas, and it's kind of nice. I have some. Maybe a little bit financially snobbish friends who won't read the Wall Street Journal, won't read the New York Times. They read only the FT, and it's a it's a it's a good paper. And I like to joust, and they're always asking. Everybody's always asking me for articles about this and that. And sometimes I do it, and sometimes I don't. And if I can tell you, can you handle? Can, can I give you one more anecdote? This was the most fun one. So my granddaughter is coming into the office to have lunch with me, and at ten o'clock in the morning, I get a note from the the op-ed page editor, Tunku Bajanarian, his name is, who was at that time in the journal. And he said, this little had a title and no message, don't you dot, 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 hate Davos. And uh, I, wrote, I wrote back to him and said, of course I do. You know, it's a whole bunch of self-important people getting together to reinforce each other's mis misguided ideas. <laughs> <laughs> so he said, can you give me a thousand words on it? And I said, sure, when do you need it? And he said, three o'clock this afternoon. <laughs> and I was not about to cancel lunch with my granddaughter, believe me. So I drafted up something real quickly, uh, why I wasn't going to Davos. And, uh, and then I came back from lunch after she left. Lovely young woman, uh, hate to see her go. Lunch was over and uh, edited and got in by three o'clock. It had to be in time for the European edition. And uh, so it got a lot of criticism. It was fun to write. <laughs> Probably one of the best things I've ever written, actually. And it ended up by saying, well, one reason I'm not going to Davos is I wasn't invited. <laughs> <laughs> and the other reason is I don't know how to get there. And he can <laughs> uh, but, uh, but I didn't read it. The President Clinton was flying over for the final session. So if he reads this and offers me a ride in his plane, I will be there. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, you're, you're, I hope you're allowed to have a little fun in this business. I certainly had my share. Sorry to take that time. Go ahead. And help.